In this episode, we're making the food that made it possible for the ninjas to be so stealthy. It gives you energy, you can eat it quietly, and it doesn't cause bad breath or flatulence. Hey there, I'm Sola El Whaley, and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. So it's a little cooking, a little history, and a whole lot of me. What's not to love? We're all familiar with modern depictions of ninjas, right? Stealthily flipping onto the scene in baggy pajamas. But in reality, ninjas were guerrilla fighters in feudal Japan with origins dating as far back as the 12th century. We're pulling our knowledge of ninjas from the Bansan Shukai, a series of scrolls written in 1676 by ninja Fujibayashi about their culture and tactics. We have to throw out a big historical caveat here. There are very few written accounts of ninjas. Even these scrolls were written years after their height of power. It makes sense. I mean, what society of secret spies would want anything written down? So just know that anything about ninja culture nowadays is a blend of a bit of fact and a bit of legend. Ninjas, sometimes called shinobi, were said to have lived in Japan's mountainous Mie prefecture between about 1487 and 1603. In order to keep as stealthy and soft-footed as possible, ninjas needed to travel light meaning they couldn't carry large quantities of food or supplies. Enter these small food balls to give them the nutrition they needed in the smallest possible package. First, there's the Hirogon pills, also known as power or energy balls. These were packed with rice and ingredients high in sugar and were meant to provide energy for quick missions. Second, there's Suikatsugan pills, also known as thirst balls. These were made of plums and either rye fungus or mint, which would help quench your thirst and keep you hydrated. And last but not least, there's kikatsugan pills, also known as hunger balls. These were made of buckwheat flour and yams. They were meant to tackle hunger and keep ninjas fed on longer missions. Okay, so all of these ninja balls are made kind of the same way. We're gonna mortar and pestle a bunch of ingredients. You knead them together with water and roll them into balls. And then we're gonna steam it. We're gonna start with the hirogan. These are the power balls for quick energy. So I'm gonna start by smashing. There will be a lot of smashing. So what we're gonna to smash together for this one is Asiatic ginger, some purple yam, lotus pips, Job's tears, rice, and rock sugar. And I'm gonna kinda of do it in batches so we can make sure we get everything really nice and fine. Okay. Ooh, smash. So I'm gonna roll each one of these balls to be about 10 millimeters in width. It's said that each ball is about 50 calories. If you eat five to seven, it'll keep you alive, and 30 or more will keep you very well fed. Now that I got these a little bit cracked, I'm gonna get in here with a few more things. My job seed, my yams. And let's put some of that sugar and rice in here. We're just gonna do a little bit at a time. We want it to be really nice and fine so that this can all like come together into these little balls. I can see how this will give you quick energy. We've got lots of carbohydrates, simple and complex. So the book or series of scrolls this recipe is pulled from, the Bansan Shukai, also has really detailed descriptions of their weapons and fighting techniques. It breaks down how they would make and use weapons. It also describes a secret way that they would ride horseback that would allow them to eat their hunger balls called the Seven Suns Way. Okay, so all of our ingredients are ground up and now I'm gonna add enough water to knead this together and then we're gonna roll our tiny balls. So this was the ninja's staple food on the go for quick operations. Its ingredients also allowed it to last for a really long time. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of water. I don't know how much we're gonna need. And hopefully we can form some tiny, tiny power balls. I actually think that there's enough water there. Maybe I went a little too far with the water. Whoops. You know, I just, uh, I went a little wild here, whoops. So, you have to be a little bit careful about how much water you add. I went a little bit crazy, so we off camera we had to make a little bit more. This is kind of the texture we're going for. It's like, uh, oh, 
a little bit more wet than wet sand, so it holds together, but you can, you can ball it, you know what I mean? Before it was just mud. To help with the stickage, I'm gonna add a little splash of water here. Keep my hands nice and moist as we roll these tiny balls. There's nothing more fun than rolling tiny balls, right? Okay, here we go. So we want about 10 millimeters, which is pretty small. And this is 50 calories. That's like, hmm, that's a lot. There's a lot going on in here. Itty bitty. So much time and energy just goes into making these. Pretty wild. Wouldn't it be better if I put this here? Whoa. Prop style in. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to keep rolling. Texts dating back to the late 17th and 18th century suggest that ninjas avoided particularly pungent foods to avoid being sniffed out by enemies. So anything with chives, garlic, and leeks were off the menu. Carrying stinky foods wasn't the only concern. It is believed that ninjas were mindful as it pertains to ingredients when it comes to all kinds of body odors, from bad breath to flatulence. If I had to guess, I think they would store these in one of those like fabric pouches. You know, the ones where you go psh, psh. You know, because you want it to stay quiet and that you can just like have it, you know, in your ninja backpack and it won't rustle around, right? So now we're gonna set these aside and move on to making our sweet katsu gun pills or thirst balls. And for this one, same deal, smish, smash, roll it into balls. Three ingredients, really simple. We've got some rock sugar once again, bloop, and then fresh mint going in, and some umeboshi plum. This stuff is really great. It's got like its own electrolyte situation, so it's almost like ancient Gatorade, and it's a great hangover cure used even today. And we're gonna smash this all together. There are some pits in here, so I'm gonna just like smash and get as much of that uh, flesh off of here before I remove the pits. It is said that if you have three of these pills, you could avoid drinking water for 45 days. But that might be a bit of an exaggeration. Humans can only go three days without drinking water. It is true that the suigatsu kan pills encourage saliva production, so maybe it just makes you feel like you're not thirsty. I really love, you know, learning about how these ancient warriors ate. We did samurais, we did gladiators, now ninjas. So let us know in the comments if there's any ancient warrior culture you want us to dig into to see what they ate. I'm just trying to get the plum and the mint really smooth and grind that sugar down. And it says to add very little water to bring it together, but the plums we have are really nice and juicy. So I don't know if we're gonna need any moisture, but we'll see. So after some smashing, our umeboshi mixture does not look like it's gonna come into balls. The recipe doesn't say to use any rice, but we feel like it's the only way to bring it together, so we're gonna go for it. Here's some pounded rice that we're gonna to add to this to help us bring it all together. How was that pour? Okay, so I'm gonna blend this together and then I'm gonna Add carefully, add a little bit of water at a time to bring it together. I'm gonna be more careful this time. Now, back then, the ninjas would have added rye fungus to this. You know that rye fungus we talked about that could have caused the Salem witch trials? So the hallucinations caused by the rye fungus are literally the same thing as LSD. Lysergic acid diethylamide is extracted from rye fungus. We'll add a link below if you missed it. But it's a little bit crazy to think that the ninjas could have been tripping on LSD while out on their missions. I'm gonna transfer to a larger bowl so I have a little bit more room to groove for my adding of water. But this was a great way to get all of that like sticky plum stuff. I'm gonna use the dry flour to like help make sure no umaboshi gets left behind. A little bit of water just to bring it together. Carefully. Whoa. Don't go crazy. 
Okay. It almost feels a little bit like it's gonna steam up and be a little bit like mochi, but like maybe not so bouncy. Remember we made some mochi a while back? It's actually pretty smooth and chewy on the inside. It came out a lot better than I thought. Um, and it was made by cooking the rice first and then pounding it. So we're kind of doing the reverse, pounding first and then steaming. So I'm interested to see how this texture is. Okay, that little bit of water did a lot. So I think I just need another like teeny tiny splash. Because the umeboshi is so moist, that gave us a lot of moisture. Whoa, that might be it. I'm just gonna go until it comes together. Yeah, I think that's it. It's kind of like a streusel. You know, when you're making a streusel, you mix up your dry, the flour, the sugar, the salt, and then you add just enough butter so it holds into clumps. It's kind of the same deal because it's gonna get a lot more hydration and cook through as it steams, so it makes sense. This is more just like to help bind it. Okay, I, just a little bit more. Now I'm like being a little too scared about it, but whew, I can't mess up, guys. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Yeah. A little bit of that wet sand vibe. This is, um, it is kind of interesting. These are like really, this is like a lot of work. Not just the pounding, but also forming the tiny balls. So they really put a lot of thought into the food that they took with them on these missions. It seems like it was an important thing because they would, they would have spent a lot of time working on this. I wonder what they did while they were doing it. Do you think as they roll tiny balls, they just think about their enemies? You know, just meditate on who they're ready to, getting ready to murder? Channel that energy into your power balls. Okay, we're ready to roll. When I gather it all together, we get clumpage. Whoa. That's fun. Just like a little bit wetter than wet sand. Okay, let's get rolling. Same kind of deal as our last power balls. We're gonna roll these into little balls and then they're gonna get steamed along with the others. A little dunk in the water to help me get going. Once again, we're going for that 10 millimeter size. Itty bitty buddies. Oh boy, that just fell apart. These are uh, a little tedious to roll. I was so scared about making it too wet that I may have made it too dry. But I think this is it. This is really it. This is the moment. Yeah, look at that. Okay. A little rinse. They are quite fragile, rolling them. You know, it's like you're trying to make a tiny ball out of sand. Okay, whoa, we got one. We're getting somewhere. So these used to have LSD in it. Maybe that's what made them think that they were not dying of thirst. Like, how can you tell if 45 days have gone by if you're just high the whole time? Maybe it was like 45 minutes. I don't know. Umeboshi on its own is really, really tart and it just makes you like pucker. It's like a gushers, but like fruit. So I imagine that this is gonna be really like punchy, really tart, that kind of like tartness just makes your mouth water. So I think that's what's gonna happen here. And then maybe the mint gives us like a fresh vibe. It's interesting that umeboshi is had as like a hangover cure because I've had it in a lot of cocktails because it helps balance out that like alcohol, you know, smash a little umeboshi in there. And it's like a umeboshi whiskey sour. Whoa, that's good. But I like that it could cause the hangover and also cure it. Now that I've rolled my suikatsu gun, I'm gonna move on to the kikatsu gun, or hunger balls. So I'm just gonna set this aside and we're gonna steam it all together later. So now we're gonna smash together rice, Japanese yam, Job's tears, ginseng. Those are all familiar from our first power ball. 
And in addition to that, we're also gonna have some licorice root and buckwheat flour. And once again, I'm just gonna grind it all in batches so we can get it really nice and fine. Ninjas would also use food as a way to send secret messages. To communicate a date, they would send fish with the size and number of pieces to indicate the month and day. If you were to commit arson, you'd send a dried fish. Sweet cakes were a call for reinforcements. Bread rolls were a call for forces to attack an enemy from the rear, and rice cakes meant that they needed provisions. If that is true, it is really cool and clever. Who would have thought military messages could be sent with food? All right, so I got my last batch of stuff finely ground, and I'm gonna add it to this big bowl, and we're gonna mix it together with the buckwheat flour. And same kind of deal, enough water to just bring it together, and then we're gonna roll our little balls. Finger fork, bring in together the dry and the dry. This is already gonna be heartier because we got the flour and the rice and the yam. So many things to like, you know, carbo load. Gladiators, they did that too. Interesting. Okay, a little bit of water at a time. This one feels really different because the other two were more about the rice holding it together. Since they've got this buckwheat flour, it feels more like a dough. I really like buckwheat flour. It has a really nice nutty taste. You see it, it's what you use to make soba, but nowadays you're seeing it more for like bread and stuff like that. Okay, is this ballable? Whoa, I think it is. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse off my hands and set up my ball rolling station with the cold water, with the cold water once again to prevent it from sticking to my hands. Okay, one more massage, I lied. I just wanna make sure, oh yeah, everything's coming together. The texture of this dough feels really different than the other two. You wanna take a look, if this feels like more like a dough. The other ones were more like wet sand. This feels more like a stiff dough. Okay. Same deal, I'm going for those little 10 millimeter sized balls. This one feels a lot easier to roll, because thanks to that buckwheat. I imagine it's gonna be like heartier. I think this one might be a little bit dense, which makes sense, because th these are the hunger balls. These are the ones you eat when you're like really hungry, when you need like long-term sustenance, not, 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 not quick energy. It does make sense the way they thought about it, you know, like the, the ones, the balls that are for quick energy, it's more like white carbohydrates, rice and sugar. And here we have like a whole grain, which is supposed to be like more slow release. Yeah, the ninjas, they know what they're talking about. So in the recipe, after they ball these up, they actually soak these balls in sake for three years. We don't have that kind of time, so we're gonna steam these like the other two. But maybe I'll take a few home, throw it in some sake, and check it out in three years. That sounds really interesting. I wonder if it's gonna like pickle somehow. I don't know. I wonder what the alcohol from the sake is gonna do to the like the carbohydrates and the rice and all that. Kind of interesting. But okay, so their thirst pills made them high and their hunger balls made them drunk. Maybe they just didn't feel that they were hungry and thirsty because they were just like kind of out of it all the time. I don't know. So now that we've made our power ball, thirst ball, and hunger ball, we're gonna take them over to the seamer. All right, our ninja power, thirst, and hunger balls are ready to go. I'm pretty excited to taste these because I think it's gonna be like nothing else I've ever had. Ninjas were said to have kept a close eye on their weight, adhering to the commonly cited ironclad rule, which stated that they couldn't weigh over 130 pounds or 60 kilos, which was the standard weight of a bag of rice at the time. And that makes sense if all you were eating were these teeny tiny balls. I think that uh, this could be a trend, you know? The tiny ball diet. Count out your tiny balls, five to seven to stay alive. I guess I wanna start with the first one I made, the power balls. That's these guys. So this is the one that's supposed to give me quick energy. 
It also has cinnamon, which I can really smell. And that's gonna be, gotta be what's giving it this kind of brown tinge. Let's pop it in. Let's go for it. Hmm. Yeah. That's pretty much just candy. Super sweet. It's a lot like mochi, but with some texture. You got a little bit of that bounce, but a lot of grit from the ground rice. I get a lot of sugar. Very, very sweet. This would definitely, like, one of these, bouncing off the walls, for sure. 30 of these, they said 30 of these would keep you alive. 30 of these might kill me. They're very, very sweet. It's like pure sugar, but it is really tasty. I really like the cinnamon. I'm getting some of that ginseng, earthiness. It's tasty. Yeah, that one's good. Thirst balls. Okay, so these, this is the umeboshi with the mint and the rice that we added to bind it. And traditionally, this would have had that fun rye fungus that kind of gets you on a trip. Totally different vibe here. Complete opposite. The power balls were like sweet and like candy. These are really tart and salty. Salty is the first thing that hits my palate. And you get a little bit of the mint, but it's like that umeboshi, salty, funky, sour thing is right at the forefront. I don't know if this would quench my thirst though. Like it's kind of making me thirsty. Salty things just make me thirsty, but they're both like really tasty, surprisingly. All right, so now let me try the hunger balls. This one has the buckwheat flour, ginseng, licorice root, rice, and some of that yam. This color is coming from that buckwheat flour. It already feels really dense. It has more buckwheat flour than rice. So I'm expecting this to be a little bit dense and maybe even a little chalky, but well, let's see. Mm -hmm. I don't like this one. <laughs> I've never had such an intense hit of ginseng. It's like bitter, clears out your nostrils, whoa. But I think that something about this bitter, chalky texture, it would make me not wanna eat anymore. I can see how this being like an appetite suppressant because I'm glad that was the last one because I feel like my palate is a little bit stripped from that ginseng. Very dense, very heavy. I can see how you would be full from like just a few of these. That buckwheat flour, it just like sits in your belly. But you know, I didn't realize how different these were all gonna be because it's all just like smash, smush together and steam. But each ball is totally unique in texture and flavor, which is super cool because they're just using one cooking technique to do such like variety of things. This was super interesting to taste. One thing to remember though, in the original recipe, you're supposed to soak these in sake for three years. So maybe that would have balanced out this like very intense, acrid ginseng taste. I think that maybe this is one of those things where cutting out that step could have really greatly affected the recipe. I also think these are super, super dense and I imagine soaking them in sake would soften them up, maybe even like plump it up. I'm really interested to try it now taking it all the way. I think we ended up cutting out a really important step, but next time, let's soak some now, and maybe three years from now, we'll do this episode again. Who knows, guys? <laughs> I think that the one that I might make again are the Power Balls, because it is, it's, it's like mochi. It's really sweet, chewy. It's just a nice little candy treat, and I like the cinnamon. It, it really feels like a little holiday treat, and they're, they're kind of pretty. They like glisten a little bit from all that sugar. I love mochi, so yeah, I'll probably continue eating these. If you like this episode, be sure to like and subscribe. And if there's an ancient or vintage recipe you want to see me try out, let us know in the comments and I'll see you next time.